Dear students, in this lecture, we shall learn about another type of functions, which is known as cubic functions. As we remember that the polynomial functions is basically the general type that can give us many types of functions. We can get linear functions, we can get even constant functions, and we can get the quadratic functions. In the same way, the cubic functions can also be obtained by using the polynomial functions. So let's resort to its standard form, which is, as we can see, y is equal to this. This is that standard form of polynomial functions that we have been using. Then uh, the cubic function, as the name says, cube. Now we all know what a cube is. Uh, let me make a cube here and we shall remind ourselves how it looks like and what it means. You see, a cube is characterized with three things. One is the length and the other is the width and the third thing is the depth or height of it. So you see, there are three dimensions in, in, in a cube. This is why when we get the function in this type, we call it a cubic function because the equation is made up of variables with the highest power, which is 3. So using that virtue, using the virtue stemming from its title, we say that n is equal to 3. And once we do that, putting the value n is equal to 3 into the standard form, we get this form of the cubic function which is basically the standard form of a cubic function and it can be written in another way as well which is written just below it where we have changed the coefficients and the constant and we have tried to make it look more simple the coefficients are a b c and d these are actually constants and in this case they are symbolic constants However, one of them has a critical restriction and that is the constant a, which is the coefficient in this case, as it appears with x cube. Let us say that x, uh, that uh, a is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, it will reduce this term to 0. And the remaining expression would be bx square plus cx plus d. So now, we can see that it is not a cubic function anymore. It looks like a quadratic function because the highest power in this case is 2. So this is that caveat that we must remember that a must not be equal to 0. It can be negative, it can be positive, but it must not be equal to 0. By reminding ourselves about the requisite of a cubic function that a is non-zero, we come to the degree of the cubic function and that is evidently 3. The degree of the cubic function is equal to 3 as the highest power is having the power of 3. I, uh, now let's talk about the diagram of it. For that we have taken a numeric example as you can see. 2x cube minus 3x square plus 5. Now, one thing that is observable is that we are lacking the term of x. The term of x is missing in this case, but it does not make this cubic function some other type of function. It will remain the cubic function, though without the term of x. And that is because the highest power is still 3. So, this cubic function can be plotted and it is done in this case. The graph shows that it is having a certain uh, curved shape and the features of this uh, curved shape is that there are two, not one, rather two bumps or wiggles in it. One is here and the other is there. So this is different from the quadratic function which was having only one bump here. For example, this could be a parabola in that case, but here there, there, there seems to be two parabolas and two parabolas mean two bumps or two wiggles in it. So this is how a cubic function is plotted on the graph. 
Now, just an example of a cubic function. Most of you are familiar with the cos function in the microeconomic theory. You can see output is plotted on x-axis and total cost is plotted on the y-axis. And this is uh, the total fixed cost, which is remaining constant, which is not changing no matter the level of output. And you can remind yourselves about constant functions because this is actually a constant function. This part of the total cost function is a constant function, whereas the remaining part, which is appearing with Q in it, is going to give rise to a variable sloped function. And you can see it is plotted like this. Uh, we can divide it into two parts. The first part is showing an increase, and that increase is actually an increase in a decreasing way. Or we can say the curve, the, the variable is increasing at a decreasing rate. This is why when the cost is increasing at a decreasing rate, the returns are increasing. And inverse to that is the situation where the cost is increasing at an increasing rate, which is undesirable. Hence, we can say that the returns, they are decreasing. So in this way, the cubic functions, they are useful in understanding the economic situations, for example, a cost function.